The Iowa Hawkeyes have had a ton of consistency over the years with quarterbacks such as Ricky Stanzi, Jake Rudock, CJ Beathard, and most recently Nate Stanley, but who will be the next great Hawkeye signal caller? Today we will meet the future of Iowa football, and his name is Spencer Petrus. We will briefly touch on his journey to Iowa City, his time at Iowa, and why he is the future of the program. But first, I want to thank you guys for 10,000 subscribers, I never thought I would get to this point, and the journey has only just begun. So if you're new and you want to help with the next journey, be sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on the bell icon so you get notified every time I upload. Every time you guys comment, like, share, and even just stay till the end will help the video get in the algorithm, which will help my channel do better and I can make more videos and continue to double upload like I am now. Be sure to let me know who I should do next. I'm trying to finish the Meet the Future series for Big Ten schools this week, and next week I will do the Pac-12 schools. Thank you guys again for 10,000 subscribers. And let's meet the future of Iowa football, Spencer Petrus. Petrus loved football from a young age, and he always took a liking to quarterback, and he definitely had the physical skills to be good at it. When he got to Marion Catholic High School, he actually broke his throwing arm and ended up having to play defensive end. He had the opportunity to play JV as a freshman, but that injury, coupled with the fact his family took a trip to Hawaii over the summer, put him behind compared to the other quarterbacks according to his coach. If he fast forward all the way to his senior year, he finished as the school's record holder for touchdowns and yards in the season, and he completed over 63% of his passes and threw for 4,157 yards and 50 touchdowns while just throwing two interceptions. He apparently worked really hard and beat all the other guys out, and he was the guy from then on. He was just able to do everything a little bit better, he was a little bit bigger, a little bit stronger, and more powerful, and had a better arm than everyone else. He was more committed than the other guys, and everything sort of just added up. His work ethic was tremendous, and that helped push him forward. Those were the words of his high school coach. Not only was he good at football, but he lettered for four years in track and field at high school while doing sprints and hurdles, and he also threw the shot put. The quarterback he's always looked after was a guy who actually came before him. His name is Jared Goff. You've probably heard of him, but he went to the same high school, and Petrus actually broke all of Goff's records. When it came time to recruiting, Nebraska was actually his dream school for a little while but they didn't have a scholarship available at the time, so he ended up committing to Oregon State. Later on after he committed, Nebraska actually offered him, but since Mike Riley's job was in jeopardy, he wasn't gonna flip. Riley did get fired as expected, and in case you didn't know, Riley was at Oregon State before he was at Nebraska. He was originally a Beaver, but a coaching change there put him back on the recruiting market, and Iowa would win his heart. The 6'5", 225 pound guy wasn't even aware that Oregon State had made a coaching change because he had been out of town without cell phone service for a couple days. When he committed to Iowa, he said he'd been praying on his decision for a while because he had known he probably wanted to make the decision to flip after he visited the Hawkeyes. A lot of prayer, a lot of talking with his family, and making sure it was the right thing went into his decision. He came to the conclusion that it was best for him to commit to Iowa, and that's exactly what he did. He was a four-star recruit on some sites, but most had him as a high three-star recruit, and 24-7 Sports listed him as the number 19 pro-style quarterback and the 421st best player in the class of 2018. He became the first California quarterback to sign with Iowa in a couple of decades. While well, Iowa, Nate Stanley was the guy, so he's kind of coming in garbage time as he did complete 6 of 10 passes as a redshirt freshman and got a lot of limited reps due to COVID-19 this spring, but every quarterback in the Big Ten is facing that same challenge. During that time, he actually stuck around Iowa City and got pretty creative. He gained as many receivers as he could find in town, and he would head to a local high school field to work on route running, timing, and accuracy. He said he did this three or four times a week. And he, gained a ton of and he gained a ton of respect from the coaching staff and all the players. If the redshirt sophomore can do what everyone thinks he can do, Iowa could have a really dynamic offense and one of the best in Ferris's 21-year tenure as head coach at Iowa. He's always been considered the next guy in line to take over for Nate Stanley, and I believe that's what he'll do. He said, quote, I consider myself a natural leader. I feel comfortable around my teammates, and I think it's important for the quarterback to be a leader and set the tone, make sure we have good tempo and good energy about us in practice. That's something that comes pretty naturally to me. Nate Stanley was more reserved as a lot of Iowa fans know, so Petrus will be a complete 180 from him. I mentioned they have a lot of weapons, and off the top of my head, I know they have four experienced receivers who have already produced in their careers. Amir Smith-Marset and Brandon Smith are dangerous seniors, they have Nico Regani, a guy who led them in receptions last year and will be really good in the slot, then they have Tyrone Tracy Jr., who has big playability. They also have a ton of guys at running back in Tyler Goodson, McKee Sargent, and Ivory Kelly Martin, and Sam Laporta is potentially the next guy at tight end. The scouting report looks good on Petrus, as he's a 6'5 pocket passer who's confident and is a leader. He isn't super mobile though, but he can do enough to make throws on the run. I think it'll be a lot of fun, and I'm excited to see what Spencer can do this season. They open up against my Purdue Boilermakers this Saturday, and I'll definitely be watching for him. 
I think this guy is the future of Iowa football, and a lot of Iowa fans can probably agree with me on this. It may take a minute for him to settle in, but he definitely has the weapons and the trust from the coaching staff, and Iowa has a good track record of finding good quarterbacks. He has the physical and mental tools to be successful, he's all the weapons in the world which will make his transition easier, and he's also very impressive in high school and has shown flash of talent so far while he's there. Iowa is a borderline top 25 team this year, and they're coming off a 10-3 record last year, so we will see how he does and how the Hawkeyes do this year. Let me know what you guys think of Petrus and what you guys think of Iowa football for this 2020 season. Will they be good or will they need another guy to be successful? Let me know down in the comment section. I think I've done every single new quarterback in the Big Ten except Rocky Lombardi at Michigan State, so you guys can expect that one tomorrow, but what quarterback should I do next or what other young player do you guys have in mind? Be sure to let me know down in the comment section, and I'll be doing the Pac-12 next week, so leave your suggestions down there. Every time you guys hit that like button, comment your thoughts, share this video with your friends, and check out all my other videos. It helps my videos get in the algorithm, which gets more views for my channel, and I can continue to double upload like I did today. If you're new and love college football, this is 100% the channel for you, so be sure to subscribe and turn on post notifications. Thank you guys again for 10,000 subscribers, and until next time, peace.